asking that was, why do we keep sending them back home? And the answer to that is, we don't have any money to send them anywhere else. So they're going to probably go back to the, where it all started, mm -hmm. where their older brother got guns in the house and drugs in the house, where their mother is smoking crack. But we're going to expect that, that they do something different. Mm -hmm. Try to find somewhere else to go to start all over. I don't care if it's around the corner, I don't care where it is, but if you, for me anyway, if I go right back into the lion's den, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to fight the lion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and that's what happens when you go right back into the same environment. You fight the forces that be. While everybody else is laying up in their luxury homes talking about those people down there, you stuck down there with those people. You got to defend yourself and you got to live. So, but. What Lionel was talking about, and what all of us, I think, is talking about is it really comes back to us standing up and us educating people, not so much as with the same system that's crippling them, but with a different system. Um, I, I told most of the young men yesterday when I was leaving the jail that the biggest key to all of this is to start trying to help somebody else. One of the things that I'm finding out in my journey is that because people helped me, it makes me want to help people. <laughs> you know, because people helped me, it makes me want to help people. So that's what I'm banking on. I'm banking on the more I try to help these young men um, that's trapped in this vicious cycle, the more that I try to help them, that somehow it makes them see that the benefit it's not getting help, but the benefit is helping people behind them. Right. Right. And I think that's the big issue um, that we can employ. Because it looks like they're not going to do it, whoever they are. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're not going to do it. You know? And why would they when the results are always appear to be the same? You help this, this guy that just came home from jail and he rips you off. Mm -hmm. So most people, they have that fear factor, why would I want to help him? His record speaks for itself. He's been in and out of prison all his life. And this is the stuff I talk about to the inmates because it starts with the individual themselves. And then you reach back out and you hope that you touch some other people. It's, it's like you don't learn this. You catch it. It's not something you learn. You catch this. You catch, you catch the desire to uplift your, your race, you catch the desire to uplift the people that you see falling. Mm -hmm. you, can, you don't learn it. You can read all the books in the world, you won't learn. You won't learn how to care about other people. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I'm learning is that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. You can talk all you want to a group of people and if you don't care about them, they don't really want to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, of society, um, because it, what happens is if the, you know if you have individuals you know the illnesses are untreated, <clears throat> what what ends up happening? It goes back and they're back into the system. They fall back the same cycle that you were talking about all over again. And so and so what has to happen is we have to create opportunities to alleviate them from going back into the system. And in, in order to do that. Um, then they will have benefits. They can have more meaningful employment. That way they will have the benefits and, and able to seek treatment, seek a more professional assistance that, you know, that that's, that's correlates with, with them in being treated professionally and being treated rightfully at the same time also. Um, you know, it also, and I also want to touch on, on just on the poverty piece because that impacts it also. Um, when you have kids growing up in foster homes, um, in in the, uh, the in the system, they're in DYRS, they're in, they're in CFSA, um, they're in the mental health system, they're in the um, prison population. You know, all of this contributes to their, you know, just to their living their likening and what they see as probably being right and the, and the only way for them. <clears throat> so so with that, you know, we have to change, and it goes back to stigma, um, um, stigmatizing, you know, all of it. Um, it's just going to touch base on on each one of each each um, component of it, as you know, we just have to 
educate them, continue to educate them rightfully, thoroughly at the same time, um, uh, empowering them at the same time too, you know, because, you know, an individual will feel or have more self-worth if he is able to empower himself first. You have to feel good about yourself first before anybody's going to do anything or you, or you feel that somebody's not helping you. You know, if you feel good with, about yourself, you know, but that all that too also has to be taught. You know, if no one teaches the individual um, or he doesn't see it from anybody else, then where is he going to get it from? You know, um, grandma or granddad has gone on, you know, this day and time. Dad is not there or uncle's not there. And a lot of times, you know, it's not because dad didn't want to be there. Dad may have been teaching him in a different way. Dad may not have been in the household, but dad was out working. And what I mean by, mean by that is dad was out, he was showing him, I'm out working. Um, coming home on the weekends because I was providing for my family at the same time also. Dad's job caused him, yes, to be out, to be away from home. Yes, Mom, yes, Mom raised the, the, the kids in the household, but Dad was out making a living, bringing uh, monies home, was providing for the family at, at the same time also. So we really have to really look at um, how, how this impacts and, and what we can do to stop this at this point in time also because we don't want this to go on for generations after generations after generations. And, 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 you know, we just have to come together and really put some programs in place at the same time. And I, I really think we need to hold the, the, the penal system accountable for a lot of this also. Um, it, yeah, um, just going back to um, something that you said earlier, you know, the penal system, if we, you know, granted, you know, the individual may get a certificate, you know, while they're um, incarcerated, but why isn't there a program to work with the families, you know, of this individual, instead of that individual going back to that same community and getting involved in the same thing, working with, with the families, okay, you know, John is coming home in six months. You know, if everything goes okay, you know, how's the living condition here? You know, what is it, you know, that, you know, the government or whoever can do to assist this individual? Churches, faith-based churches needs to step up their game also. We have to look, look at, okay, you know, look at transitional homes instead of as alternatives. Instead of going home, okay, I don't want to get back into the same rut that I was in, running running with my boys, mm -hmm. out drinking, out smoking, getting high and everything. Okay, it may, it may be a transition to home somewhere across town that's going to help me out that, that, you know, at some point in time, I might can help moms or sister or brother out and moving them from out of that community, moving them out the way I, I am. So we really have to look at it, look at it as a whole right now. Yeah. So health care safety net in the African American community. And somebody has to really look at that because, you know, preventative care is, is the key. And I found out if you don't address that with the whole family, I mean, where do we go in that community for just basic health care? To me, then mental illness can be seeked out very early. You know, there could be could be family history, there, there could be something that happened, prenatal care, there could have been something, you know, you you have to address this at an early age and then, you know, because always they come up with, we treat that symptom with medication, you know. There could have been something way ahead of time that they could have identified early on. So I think healthcare is pivotal in in our community, especially those that are low income communities. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had to put more pressure on the on the governments, you know, to provide basic health care, you know. And even to the point they say faith based community, if you look up, you know, that could be the start there. Galvanize them to do health screens, health screens, things that were going my church, two, three doctors were 
Well, what are you doing when you ain't doctoring, yeah. making money? Yeah. Why you ain't here doing blood trust? trust? Yeah. You know, we have elderly population. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you could set up and have flu shots for us. You yeah, know, something. maybe you can bring somebody in. Yeah. You know, we always, you know, we look for the government to try that, mm -hmm. but I think we got enough doctors, lawyers, research people. That's not the answer. Yeah. You know, because what you do is, yes, you you have taken yourself out, but if you have children, you know, the children is still yeah. there yeah. left mm -hmm. to yeah. suffer. Mm -hmm. Your parents, other family members are left to suffer, mm -hmm. and, uh, emotional, emotionally, uh, spiritually, and financially. Mm -hmm. Because financially, you know, because if you know, um, insurance companies don't pay for suicide. Right. Right. You know, right. so right. with that, you know, and so it really boils down to, as you said, you know, them getting the help that they need, you know, from, from the beginning. At some point, all catching it early intervention. And, you know, with early intervention, at least, you know, because an individual can, can also be thinking about it, you know, having, having suicidal thoughts. Um, you don't know if they have a plan in place or not. You know, but one day you walk in, in your child's room and you see a note, you know, saying you found a note. You know, they already have it all dressed out, you know, what, how, how they're going to do it, what they're going to do, and when they're going to do it, you know. But with early intervention, if, if, you know, with, with that, if we can, you know, at least focus on, on that piece of it, you know, getting the individual the help that they need, um, hopefully, because, you know, so the suicide rate amongst African Americans has gone up. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I'll say within the last twenty years. Why really. is that? Um, I really think you know, just um, mental health services in general mm -hmm. being stigmatized. That not not the families are not dealing with it, or they're feeling that okay, there's nothing wrong with Johnny Boy. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, John, he just going through. So he broke up with his girlfriend yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that. He lost his job. But you know, you don't know exactly. He may <clears throat> one one good one good reason or one good thing that you can tell when somebody is really contemplating is when they you know if you have an active and a vibrant child, mm -hmm. and eventually all of a sudden they start becoming depressed, mm -hmm. withdrawing, mm -hmm. not not talking on the phone mm -hmm. as much, mm -hmm. not. Interacting with you know his buddies a whole yeah, lot. Yeah, you see, don't want to go. Those those are early warning signs yeah. for you right there. Believe yeah. those are early warning signs. So if you have those signs, at least that's an opportunity for intervention right there. Seek the help at that point in time right there. Um, granted, and then you know whatever else comes upon it from that point, and, and at least you know you have a baseline from that point too. So, you know, you don't want to come home one day and, you know, just like you said, you found found boy was hanging in the bedroom or in the basement or something. Mm -hmm. You know, that that is very devastating for anybody. Yes. You know, yes. Having, yes. Having, having to witness or, you know, to find their child, find their brother or sibling, you know. So, you know, early, early, early detection, early mm -hmm. intervention, mm -hmm. you know, really uh, is, is a key. And, and it's not always just medication, yes. you know, providing medication, right. okay, right. he's depressed, let's give him, give him this. You have to get to the root of it to yes. really find yeah. out yeah. what is the root, what, what's a yeah. contributing yeah. factor. Yeah. And that's say, okay, we're going to deal with your depression right now, okay, yeah, but what's really, what's the contributing factor and how can I, how can we best serve you at this point? It's something dramatic to happen. You know, and, and that's sad, but usually that's where the change, where the turning point comes. Um, so I feel that what about those kids that we don't catch early on? There should be no cutoff limit, you know, because I was in my late 20s, you know, I'm not older than that now. And when I made a change in my life, you know, start going down a different path. But it took what it took, and it took some praying and some faith, and most of all, it took some consequences. <laughs> because I had no consequences to my behaviors, 
I want the world to change the world. Individually, don't stop it. Just that's the good thing. It's it's used as a, as a jump start. Now let's try to get um, into maybe a, a university. If you want to do culinary arts, you know a lot of uh, your brothers are coming out with you know, cooking certificates in, in, in prison. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get into maybe culinary arts school. Mm-hmm. All right, maybe uh, go out and start attending uh, different food shows. You know, there's always some kind of food show, mm-hmm. and you got to network, network. You know, mm-hmm. go out and start meeting people, tell people who you are, and and, and, and get involved. No one, people won't know who you are unless you're somewhere. You got to be somewhere. So, right after you get out of jail, you got a certificate and go go back to the living room and playing PlayStation, you're not going to get it. That's right. You know, so you got to develop those skills, you got to learn how to network, sell yourself, you know. And uh, man, a lot of brothers come out barber, um, a barber in I told one, one young man, um, he was a good barber, and I told him, I said, well, look, uh, I met with him one time, I said, can you cut uh, other, uh, other ethnicities' hair? Can you cut um, Caucasian people's hair? And next, next two weeks I came back, I saw him, he said, I got something to show you. He went and got a little uh, a white guy who was, uh, an inmate, he <laughs> showed me his haircut. I said, all right, cool. And I took a, a step further. I said, look, why don't you uh, look at this? I said, um, I know a guy, uh, he, yeah, he's a barber. I said, and, uh, when you get out, get me and I work. I said, think about maybe being a dog groomer. He said, yeah, you know, right, because hair, that's hair. You know? yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying, those, sometimes yeah, look at the big like things, sometimes yeah, we got to break it down, yeah, look at little, little other things that mm-hmm. we could do. We got this skill. So you're like, you know what, I'm going to pursue that. You know? So, um, and, you know, and the, the brother wound up uh, doing the grooming, and then he got uh, set up uh, in Baton Rouge, as in Louisiana, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cutting hair, then he started boarding dogs, yeah. little baby steps, baby mm-hmm. steps. So those kind of things, you know, sometimes we, we, we have to help them by empowering them, giving them a, I mean, that guide, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes engage them, ask fundamental questions, sometimes that all, that all, that's that what needs to happen, you know. So, those things like that can, uh, is, is a way of uh, assisting young know, men when they're coming out of jail, how to how to find a job, or how to begin to uh, develop those skills. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I've seen two or three go through that school in our facility. And so this young man, not, not, too, not too young, but I said to myself, it's about us. We always say give back. Mm-hmm. It ain't about Giving back. Mm-hmm. It's a given that you have to carry on this next group of men. Yeah. It's a given. I yeah. mean, it's a given. Mm-hmm. So, so my thing is, I took it upon myself is go to the Nats game. There are 102 vendors for sale food. Mm-hmm. So, Monday, Tuesday, I'm calling the Nats and I'm going to find out, hey, how can I get this man for next year's? Yeah. Set him up with MV right there. I mean, that's what we here for, you know. I used to work in in, in the defense industry, work with an NF object, killing people all the time. Mm-hmm. And my faith, whatever it was, hit me and said, Hold up, we doing something wrong. I grew up in, you know, we played army all the time. Yeah. Out there yeah. and I'm playing real army. Yeah. The weapons I'm building. I see the test and they're killing every day in the world. I said, oh, this, this ain't for me. Something hit me in my foundation. Right. When I grew up and said, then I shouldn't be doing that. I need to be working with human beings. Yeah. And that part of that is to come full fruition. And, and what I did, you know, with this young man, what I'm going to do. And I'm, I said, that's what I have to do. And, and, and then I, two weeks ago, I had a meet and greet with the president of Voice College. HBC down in South Carolina, Denmark. really Denmark, my home, my father's hometown. Grew up through all that, and he talked to us. As soon as I walk in the door, you guys are talking about the young men that come down to the college, they get into college, and then they don't understand the attributes for going out from college, getting an interview. Mm-hmm. While you in college, they have programs. The ceremonies where young men need to dress in a suit and tie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, just this year, it's one young man. They, they, they explained the event. We're going to want you in your best. Mm-hmm. One young man came to the event with yellow hat, yellow gym shorts, yellow t-shirt, and a shirt. And and he said, Doctor Sunset, 
I'm talking to her. This, this is my best yeah, doctor. Girl. So, so, so Dr. Sellers in this, with me and other people that belong to college woman, can you get a suit for, for these young men? Just right. open up a closet. We have it at our place. We call it Macy's. Right there. Yeah. RPC. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. the men that they never knew about, you know, yeah. what it takes. Mm -hmm. And just in that little setting, right. that could set that young man on the right course. Mm -hmm. right. When it's time for an interview, he understands what it takes to get an interview. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to look like that person across the room from you yeah. when you go in the interview. You know, right. the paper is the first part. That'll get you in the door. We have to prepare them for that. Mm -hmm. You know how to do that. But once you get in the door, you got to concentrate on yourself, but come across as a person that can be an attribute for that company. Right. Yeah. So the first thing is a suit, and mm -hmm. then your education. Mm -hmm. And we know we're getting the education there, at the college. We can voice on it. But the, but the president takes a little step extra. It's about the person, and I see that full circle. Sometimes he has to intervene and come in and sit down with a young man. And mm -hmm. we talk mostly about young men. Mm -hmm. Sit mm -hmm. down with them and find out what's going on in them, That's right. in their lives. You know, at that level, at college level, mm -hmm. you don't get too much of that one-on-one -on -one attention. College, you're supposed to be prepared from high school mm -hmm. to come into a situation and function, be able to function. Mm -hmm. but. He felt that this is a need. This, these students portray bullies once they go on, and they have some very distinguished alumni. Mm -hmm. They have ventured all over this world, and, and the trainings for global. And, and for me, it takes heart too because three or four years ago, I had a meeting just like this with a group of men, and we we formed a group called the Men's Forum, and we decided to adopt a school for young boys. And we started, the school started with kindergarten, and now it's up to third grade. Mm -hmm. Kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, because we sat around and we saw the data, how many of our young men incarcerated. Mm -hmm. We saw how many drop out. And, and we were looking around the table, you know, <coughs> we're going, what is going on? And it, the picture came back to us. Mm -hmm. We didn't blame TV. Mm -hmm. We didn't blame news. Mm -hmm. you know, it was the men in our community that we right. grew up. That's We're right. the problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. And only we can solve it. <coughs> I hate the baggy pants. I hate all that. So we got to solve the problem. Yes, so right. we adopted a school, really a school, the Bishop Walker School for Boys, just started. And we said, this would be great. We start these young boys out in a foundation. Yes. And the, the key with this school is tuition free. And it's East of Anacostia off yeah. Martin Luther King Avenue. Yes. Tuition free. Yes. Okay. The first year, <laughs> we were begging for, for parents bringing their kids in. Mm -hmm. We got 10, 12 boys and 12 parents. They had to sign <coughs> an agreement, a commitment with the school, with the diocese of Washington, the principal diocese of Washington, that they would participate. And from that first pre-kindergarten class, the next year, they were knocking down the door. Yeah, they got a thousand suicide. And also, you know, if, if a person, a uh, young man tells you he had thoughts, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, suicide is a decision, and it's a final decision. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's you, and sometimes you give them that kind of language, it's final. Mm -hmm. decide. Yeah, I had a client, attempted suicide, the process of hanging, mm -hmm. changed his mind. Mm -hmm. He was able to get the rope or string, whatever, uh, a, a loosen. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, I didn't realize that that was, that was going to be it for me. Yeah. Right. So those kind of things, mm -hmm. we have to sometimes play the whole tape mm -hmm. to, to, to mm -hmm. individuals mm -hmm. and not give people just the milk, milk and sugar, mm -hmm. but give them the whole, give them the meat. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's fine. And it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. I was that man that y'all talking about. That's why, you know, that's why I wanted to come here today because I'm so passionate about helping that man because that man didn't get the, the help, you know. And, and what happens is, um, I didn't, my dad lived around the corner. And he had a nice house, and he raised other kids that he had with his new wife, and mm -hmm. I was an outcast. I would try to go around there and be loved by him, and he treated me like he didn't want to be bothered. 
So I understand what those kids going through. Mm -hmm. You know, but what happened was that I came and got some assistance and stuff, and and and, and, and my life changed around now. That that uh, I'm doing what John was talking about. Now I'm I'm, I'm passionate about helping that man, mm -hmm. the the ones that we miss, mm -hmm. because you're not gonna catch everybody early mm -hmm. in the check. There's gonna be some that, right. that slip through. What we do? Do we give up on them? No, because they can make an impact too. Because it's going to be some of those, you know, and, I, and that's why I, I'm so passionate about it, you know. But the honest piece is, is what's really out the window, you know. So the honest piece is out the window, and, and that don't give the people, you know, like those men had trust issues because mm -hmm. everybody they trust, dog, mm -hmm. you know, the people supposed to protect them. Shun them, mm -hmm. like like Mr. Davis was talking about. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with those people? They hurt, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to say right. I'm hurt. So how they say I'm hurt is to, to say I'll show you I hurt me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they're looking for love. Mm -hmm. yeah, for those sure. men, for those men, excuse me. Go ahead. For those men that they will keep coming back, mm -hmm. and I, I know you had that experience. Now they might not say it mm -hmm. in their in their voice. Mm -hmm. They might not voice it, mm -hmm. but you watch they keep coming back around mm -hmm. you. And and, and and if you keep on being persistent, mm -hmm. especially with that firm hand you was talking about, mm -hmm. you're gonna get a breakthrough with those men. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you've been persistent with your showing them love mm -hmm. and, and, and talking to them firmly. They don't like games. Mm -hmm. right. right. You know, you can't yeah. come to them with that. Oh dear, because um, they don't think it's a hidden motive. Right. Right. But if you're firm mm -hmm. and consistent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they'll break the a safe place to lay it out. <laughs> yeah. And they, they observe. Right. Yeah, they observe very observe. They come, in, they come into your oh, office. Right. Right. When they sit in the waiting room, they listen to your secretary yes. or your administrative assistant, what she's talking about. They yeah. listen to see what the counselors are talking about. You know, they, they're observing the whole deal, you know. Mm -hmm. And then. If, if, they, if they find it's a safe place, mm -hmm. eventually they will. Like you, the brother saying, they will, they'll, they'll let it out mm -hmm. a little bit at a time, you know. So as so as, uh, as uh, agents of change, we have to make sure we do what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. in, in churches, mm -hmm. also people coming in, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people sure. go to church, leave church and go and kill somebody. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. they're looking for a safe place. People are looking for a safe place. Mm -hmm. Hurt other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that if a person did hurt you, it's not nothing that you deserve. And it's not nothing that you have to be afraid to talk about. It. You have to be courageous sometimes. You have to find that, that courage to go inside to, uh, I guess, to nurture that wounded child and begin to heal from those issues and free yourself of, of, that, of, that, of that burden and free yourself from that, begin to free yourself of that trauma. So those are some of the things I would tell a person. Woman. They just think, you know, if I get angry, I can slap her around because it's it's normal well, to them. It's never, it's it's it everybody. was normal. It's an old saying. To listen to me, you know, it's an old saying that um, you usually hurt the one that you love, mm -hmm. and most very much so. And, and with that, and if a man was abused in some way when he was a child, teenager, at some point in time, because it goes back. Remember, you know, if they didn't receive no type of treatment for it. Then it was always instilled in them, you know. Okay, I'll I just gotta live with it, live with this for the rest of my life. And some point in time, you know, as they became young adults, you know, middle aged adults, you know, you know, this day and time, folks are having breaks from you know mental health breaks um, from issues that resulted from past incidents um, such as as abuse, and and if it was never dealt with then. And they saw the mother, the father and the mother going at it, or the uncle and some, someone, you know, learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They learned behavior. Mm -hmm. I saw my father slap my mama yep. against the wall. I'm going to do the same yeah. thing, too. Yeah. I, see my, I see my sister getting beat by her brother. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to beat my wife and child, too. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and if, they, if there's no intervention when he, when he was a, a, a youngster, at some point in time, then so he's going to carry that, you know, along with him. And if he doesn't, and if he has kids, 
you know, the, his kids are going to see yeah. the same thing, same. and same. if they don't have, if they don't have no intervention for them, you know, hopefully, you know, generation of curses. exactly, there's been a generation of curses mm -hmm. on, on down the line. But if there's some type of intervention that was caught, you know, I'm going to, you know, this is going to be the, be the generation that's going to break the break cycle, the cycle. Right. you know. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the generation. So if I got to go find seek help for myself, so, yeah, you right. know, yeah. and I'm going to be the one. Yeah. This has to stop here. Yeah, it has to right. stop, right. stop somewhere. So you know, you know, we yes, we have to take onus of it because no one else, no one else is going to help us right. with this right now. That's so right. you know, so we really have to step that up too. Yeah. I think a lot of that was happening, especially back. Back, it seemed like a lot of the older black guys were, and I don't know if it was the alcohol or what, but they were predators toward the family. And I think, uh, especially like in my case, I grew up thinking that if you didn't argue and fuss with your wife or your woman, you didn't love her. They, they, they kind of made you thought that if you, it's almost like something I just was talking about. Um, a partnership is consisted of two people, not one person. Um, controlling the whole partnership. It takes two people to be in a partnership, but we were taught that you got to, you know, dominate your woman and better not nobody talk. Um, and, and a lot of the older guys, I, I, I saw that with, like my uncles, they would drink alcohol and be very abusive. So, of course, in my mind, I thought this my man's supposed to be abusive. You know, so you grow up thinking that you're supposed to be domineering and aggressive and if you don't be won't nobody respect you and you find out later on that's not true. I think, uh, I think over the course of time I, I, would, I would say even uh, around the era of the uh, civil rights movement I think um, in, in the black community we began to move towards different uh, different goals different uh, living different lifestyles and uh, I believe that uh, one of the things that the uh, the uh, the family in the, in the African American uh, community got affected by this, by the, 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 the I guess the flight uh, or, or the, or the uh, desire to attain attain different goals. And I think we somewhere, somewhere along the way we lost a sense of family. Well, back to slavery day, it's a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. If I could come in, in in there and take your wife out of bed. Mm -hmm. And, and you can't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. right. Then what's the vision of the wife mm -hmm. on her husband? Mm -hmm. He not protect me. He can't right. protect. Me. Mm -hmm. he, you know, master stronger than him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so you ain't nothing. Then you know, and, and then divide that division mm -hmm. in the family. Mm -hmm. You know, not to mention it was through all all the slaves. True. True. But we talking about just that very significant part about your husband is less than a man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about when it got to the point where civil rights started, mm -hmm. then now we're supposed to be liberated. Mm -hmm. Right. But but that's the, the myth. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because the system is still in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just been more modernized. Mm -hmm. And it's like those myths and other myths have been spread into the black community. For instance, that um, a black man is hard to find. Yeah. yeah. In my circle of friends, I'm from New Orleans. I have mm -hmm. four friends, good friends. That are single parents, men. That are single parents that are, they're raising their children, mm -hmm. have raised their children. Mm -hmm. Most of them are young adults now. But you, you would think that if you watch TV, that you couldn't find a black man that's raising his children. But I have four, four friends, as I said, mm -hmm. that are single parents. Mm -hmm. For whatever reasons, they aren't with their their mothers. Mm -hmm. But they, they they stood up and they took mm -hmm. took the took the position and raised their children. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's one of the one of the myths that we have. There are black men. There may not be a black man in a in a, in a home. But there's a black man in the, in the neighborhood that you can find. There's a black man at the church. We just have to find him. And also, we have to begin that uh, that piece of mentoring, like your brother was saying, that we have um, true mentors, honorable mentors that go into the communities and go into the schools and go into the and work in the churches and assist young young, young black men to develop their their, their manhood. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think the stigma is is. It's one of the biggest problems, like what he was saying. Even now, for me, when I watch, I, I'm, and I don't have anything against Oprah, but if I watch Oprah, okay. and my daughter or one of my younger relatives, um, they follow Oprah, and, and the, the kind of um, suggestion that I get from that is don't get married, don't have kids, 
Don't be about family and you can be the uh, black billionaire woman. Um, and men, especially younger men, it's almost like, because I even grew up like that. I, I grew up believing that the family would hold me back. A woman with a kid would hold me back. They taught me in school that one child um, could be the cost of a Bentley in 10 years. So don't have kids. Um, abort your kids. Don't have them. Just have abortions. And that kind of stuff puts an imprint in your mind that the family is not valuable. Mm -hmm. That money is the only valuable thing. And we didn't really get to this point like that. Somehow we've, we've taken root to that because mm -hmm. it's almost like that's the only thing that we think that will save us. But we constantly look at people with money not being happy. So it's just such a stigma that makes you think that if you stay with the home, if you stay with the family, you're not going to be successful. Because people like Oprah Winfrey and everybody we know with money, they marry, divorce, marry, divorce, they don't stay with family. And so it's a stigma, especially, I watch like my little nieces or something, watch TV, and then they become, I did it. I wanted to be like John Wayne, because it represented something strong. So I do think the power of um, TV and suggested images right. is what's controlling our community. We on PlayStation, we on Facebook, we, we, we everywhere else except right in our family where we should be. Mr. Martin, talk about stigma in mental health. Stig stigma in mental health goes back for centuries, especially in the African American uh, communities, African American homes. because. Um, it was a recent um, study, um, I think it was by uh, NI, NI, um, National Institute of Mental Health. They did a study, one in three, one in four African Americans suffer from some type of um, mental health disorder, mental health disease. Out of, out of, out of that percentage, um, it, it's to the point that it's not that they don't have insurance or anything, they will go for a, a first time treatment. What the problem is, what they have encountered is, um, they, don't, they don't return for follow up care. And don't return for, if they don't return for follow up care, then they're back out into the community doing some of their old habits, doing some of their old things um, that they used to do previously. Um, you know, I grew up in the South, and back in the back in the days, even probably before my my days, you know, you know, it, it wasn't common for the um, African American families to, to go to the doctor to tell you know to, 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 to seek mental health treatment. That's right. You know, that's something that would always be kept. Okay, the family will take it. Or you know, the son. Oh, he is okay. He just having a rough time right now. But you know. And, and, and then that was ingrained in our thoughts or yes. our friends' um, minds all, all over. Whereas, <clears throat> I think it has come to the point now, is, or at least it's revolving, it's, it's getting somewhat better that, you know, they are seeking out mental health services. However, it's still stigmatized to, to the point that um, we don't want to be locked down on a war. We don't want to be locked down with... Um, being treated um, with uh, quote-unquote prolix and thorazine, some of the, the old medicines and, and, and everything. However, um, um, also in that study that, that was done out at the um, National Institute of Mental Health, um, it, it showed that um, uh, I think what the U.S. is made up of about 12 to 15, 12 to 17 million African Americans. And to th this day and time, it is getting better. However, I think the focus has, has been lost. Um, uh, uh, instead of focusing on our health, our well-being, um, and trying to get rid of this uh, stigma of, um, of mental health, um, as the brothers were saying earlier, you know, we're looking, we're looking at okay, what can I get out of this system now? Um, if I can get a, an apartment, a subsidized apartment, if I can get Medicaid um, or any other um, uh, city entitlement. And so um, the focus has been lost in, in trying to receive good treatment 
or uh, reaching out to uh, to our faith-based community in the churches. The churches are not, to me, I think the churches are not doing enough mm -hmm. at this point in time. I think there's, there's um, which is which could be a very powerful mentoring yes. tool yes. if yes. we don't utilize the churches enough. Yes. We, um, you know, the, 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 you know, just in the Washington D.C. metro area alone, there is a strong, there is a powerful religious organization right here, yes. you know, that's not being tapped into. There's a lot of faith-based initiatives that's not being tapped into. So I think at this point in time, we really need to um, get away from a lot of the talking and and going out and researching and uh, touching base and coming together with more forums and panels like this and getting more folks involved that way, you know, and getting the message out there, and <clears throat> that way we'll know, um, it, um, the folks will know what's out there, what services are out there, what services that they really need for them, and really utilizing um, what's in our own communities, because the whole community is changing, is shifting, you know, we, we look in the metro area today, everything is shifting, you know, you can say 20, 30, 40 years ago, Washington D.C. was Chocolate City. Yes. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's no more. There's no more is no Chocolate City anymore. You know, the whole landscape has changed, and then it's not just in the community. It's throughout. The, that's happening throughout right right now. So we really have to um, put on our thinking caps and and not having a, a lot of uh, problems and um, and other stuff like that. But we need to come up with some. Um, resolving and resounding solutions for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, and really utilizing what we have here first. Okay, well why does, um, since you mentioned churches, why mm -hmm. are churches so apt to think of mental illness as quote unquote demonic instead of, I, I know we need to be educated in, in that area, but it seems to be an area that, that churches are very shunned from. Um, because the first thing they say is it's demonic as opposed to recognizing that it can be a chemical imbalance or some, in some cases some is because of an accident or something. Mm -hmm. and we, do, we don't even get that far. I really, I really think it goes back to, you know, just like, okay, going back to the churches alone, you know, you have a lot, quote unquote, a lot of old time preachers, a lot of old time pastors, you know, that didn't believe in doing certain things or just believed in keeping the secret within, in the yes, home, within, yes. in the family. Whereas, to, you know, today you have a lot of uh, new blood yes. in the churches. You, matter of fact, my church alone, you know, we have a 37-year-old pastor, you know, very down-to-earth, very up-to-date in technology and, and everything, and really expressing and wanting to do more in the community, um, examining some of these issues. Matter of fact, my home church back in South Carolina, um, they are putting together a program, a mental health program within the church. Mm -hmm. They have some individuals in the church who work in the mental health uh, field, mm -hmm. so they are putting together some programs right there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just feel, you know, pastors, preachers today, and one of the other things, I really think they don't know how to discuss it. They really don't know how to, or what to do with it, or really, you know, but if you just reach out, to you know, to your congregation, you, you never know what you you know what, what can be tapped in uh, right in your home. Yeah, home sometimes, place. yeah, people in your um, in, in your um, ministry, there exactly. are members mm -hmm. that uh, have those skills of knowledge. I mean, know people that they can bring in mm -hmm. to, uh, to educate you on, on those different topics. But like you said, you know, you're talking about the church, but on Sunday you have a lot of hurting people in those pews mm -hmm. uh, come to church mm -hmm. looking for answers sometimes mm -hmm. and looking for looking for directions and, mm -hmm. and I think uh, yeah we could empower it do a better mm -hmm. job empowering the churches right. the ministries and the churches on how to how to handle or, or how to mm -hmm. uh, approach um, uh, people with uh, issues when uh, individuals have uh, mental health issues. Right. You know? and, and, and you also see in the churches today you, you see more individuals with, with mental health mm -hmm. seeking out churches because, you know, they're coming to church and you can see some folks, you know, oh, he's back here again, you know, up and down, walking up and down, bothering people. But it's what you have in place, you know. Okay, they're, they're in the church to um, 
he had to, you know, receive a message just like you and I are right. here right. to receive a message. And and, and, and they're human beings. They have, they have lives that, you know, you don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they want to empower themselves at the same time. They, right. You know, they have a faith um, foundation mm -hmm. that they've probably been brought up on. So that's something at least, you know, it tells me, okay, they may have a mental illness, but still, you know, they have the, the, the know-how and the whereabout to still know where to go to seek the divine help. Right. You know, so, you know, so we just have to build on it. Yeah, um, being in, the, in, in ministry and stuff like that, it's one of the hardest things I've ever tried to start was like a, um, a group for people um, within the church, but not like on a different night or something. Most people don't come out they, everybody will tell them God will fix it okay but God is the one who created this program so you got these issues go to the program get some help you've been sitting on this problem for years now I've never seen mental illness like I see it in churches because denial is one of the biggest problems with mental illness your sister so and so she, one minute she's friendly, the next minute she's evil. She's uh, bipolar. <laughs> you know, one minute she'll speak to you today, tomorrow she'll walk right by you like she didn't see you. You know, one minute he uh, act like he's your friend, the next minute he can't stand you. But they will say stuff like, well, God it will fix it on his time. And I'm like, that's why God created this group for us to come in mm -hmm. so we can talk and we can start bonding and helping each other. But in churches, they keep secrets. They don't want to tell anybody what's really going on with them. They don't, they don't want to tell anybody that their son is smoking crack at night. They don't want to tell anybody that their, their wife is an alcoholic. They come to church, and they, they never come clean about what's going on with them. You know, and that's, I think, is the biggest problem with, with especially black churches. Mm -hmm. They will not tell the truth about what's really going on. They'll come to church every Sunday and be eating beans and rice and don't have a dollar to, 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 to barely get a soda with and they would just shout about the Lord and how good the Lord is and then they won't do anything to get any help. That is one of the biggest problems that I see in black churches today. If you prevent a person, um, in this case a man, from being able to manage his life, mm -hmm. it also prevents him uh, to attain opportunities that he would have if he had his life or was able to manage his life. It affects the community because the per that one person can impact the entire community in, in, a, in a positive way. But what happens, it often impacts community in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So those, 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 that's my piece on what happened with uh, untreated mental health. And he really never got the help he needed. You know, and I, I used to try to point him in the direction. You can come here, I'll give you a number, I'll get this. And, and his thing was he couldn't find a job couldn't read too well, you know, he didn't, you know, and these was all the, the reasons, mm -hmm. but it was never really deal with the, the, the mental illness was never dealt with, mm -hmm. and now you put a PCP on top of it? One, suicide is not the answer, right. you know, because what you do is, yes, you, you have taken yourself out, but if you have children, you know, mm -hmm. the children is still there mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. to yeah. suffer. Your parents, other family members are left to suffer mm -hmm. in, uh, emotional, emotionally, uh, spiritually, and financially. Because mm -hmm. financially, you know, cause if you know, um, insurance companies don't pay for suicide. Right. Right. You know, right. so right. with that, you know, and so it really boils down to, as you said, you know, them getting the help that they need, you know, from, from the beginning at some point or catching it early intervention, and, you know, with early intervention, at least, you know, because an individual can, can also be thinking about it, you know, having, having suicidal thoughts. Um, you don't know if they have a plan in place or not, you know, but one day you walk in, in your child's room and you see a note, you know, saying you found a note. You know, they already have it all dressed out, you know, what, how, how they're going to do it, what they're going to do, and when they're going to do it, yes. you know, but with early intervention, if, if, you know, with, with that, if we can, you know, at least focus on, on that piece of it, you know, getting the individual the help that they need, 
um, hopefully, because, you know, su the suicide rate amongst African Americans has gone up, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I'll say within the last 20 years. And why is that? Um, I really think, you know, just um, mental health services in general, mm -hmm. being stigmatized, that not, not the families are not dealing with it, or they're feeling that, okay, there's nothing wrong with Johnny Boy. Mm -hmm. You know, he just going through this, he broke up with his girlfriend or something mm -hmm. like that. He lost his job. But, you know, you don't know exactly. He made <clears throat> one, one, good, one good reason or one good thing that you can tell when somebody is really contemplating is when they, you know, if you have an active and a vibrant child mm -hmm. and eventually all of a sudden they start becoming depressed, mm -hmm. with, withdrawn, mm -hmm. not not talking on the phone mm -hmm. as much, mm -hmm. not interacting with, you know, his buddies a whole yeah. lot, mm -hmm. they don't want to go. Those, those are early warning signs yeah. for you right there. Believe yeah. those are early warning signs. So if you have those signs, at least that's an opportunity for intervention right there. Seek the help at that point in time right there. Um, granted, and then, you know, whatever else comes upon it from that point, and, and at least, you know, you have a baseline from that point too. So, you know, you don't want to come home one day and, you know, just like you said, you found found boy was hanging in the bedroom or in the basement or something. You know that that is very devastating for anybody yes. to, to have, have, have to witness or you know to find their child, find their brother, uh, sibling. You know so you know early 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 detection, early mm -hmm. intervention. Mm -hmm. You know really uh, is, is a key. Um, and, and it's not always just medication, yes. you know, yeah. providing medication, right. okay, right. he's depressed, let's give him, give him this. Mm -hmm. You have to get to the root of it to yes. really find mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. what is the what, what's yeah. a contributing yeah. factor. Yeah. And that's say, okay, we're going to deal with your depression right now, and okay, mm -hmm. yeah, but what's really what's the contributing factor and how can I, how can we best serve you at this point in time? What, because we're talking intervention, what if you have an intervention that, that does not respond mm -hmm. to, to the intervention that, that's been given to them? You know, you, you, you're showing that you care and, you know, you want to tap into whatever mm -hmm. is causing them to go, but they don't respond to you. What do you do then? It's not always you. You can't just rely on yourself at the same time, too. Seek professional help. Yes, at some point you have to. Because, yeah. granted, we're going to treat our loved ones in a special way, yes. in a way that we feel, in a nurturing way that we feel that they probably need. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you seek the professional help that's going to get to the root of it, it may take a couple of times. It may not just be one time or two times. It may take, just like someone going going through rehab, mm -hmm. it could yeah. be three, four, five, and six four times minutes. before mm -hmm. they really yeah. get it. Right. And so you really have, so, it, and if you can get with a, a company or get with an individual, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, just like I said, it's not always about medication. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a whole lot of holistic um, approaches, there's a whole lot of, um, earthly ways of doing things also so so but you know getting to that and sticking with it mm -hmm. don't give up on the first time or the, or the second time you know just keep plugging along and let it but don't deny the individual the love and the nurturing yes they're going to need that mm -hmm. in conjunction with whatever professional help that they're getting on the outside too mm -hmm. so so you since we're you know recording this we're Basically, you're telling that loved one to pursue Definitely. to the fullest extent the fullest. and don't expect that individual exactly. to be doing it, but take the responsibility the on exactly. their behalf. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Like in a session. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. you know, a lot of times they say, well, you, you need to go get this, you need to go do right. it, but then we need to know what the individual needs right. to do themselves to help okay. that person exactly. as opposed to expecting them to go out. Because they, they, they're in a state where... They, they are helpless, basically, yeah, exactly. at that point. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, so, you know, not an individual who's, um, has suicidal ideation, mm -hmm. you know, thoughts of suicide. And also, you know, if, if a person, uh, a young man, tells you he had thoughts, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, suicide is a decision, 
and it's a final decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you, and sometimes when you give them that kind of language, it's final. Mm -hmm. yeah, I had a client, attempted suicide, the process of hanging, mm -hmm. changed his mind. Mm -hmm. He was able to get the rope or mm -hmm. string, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. a loosen. Mm -hmm. And he like, you know, I didn't realize that that was, that was going to be it for me. Yeah. Yeah. So those kind of mm -hmm. things, we have, we have to sometimes play the whole tape mm -hmm. to, 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 to the individual. Mm -hmm. And not give people just the milk, milk and sugar, mm -hmm. but give them the whole, give them the meat. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's fine. And it's going to come back from it. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, right. I should went and um, that word again, denial. Yes, you know, denial. pride. Okay, mm -hmm. all these things we need to, when it comes to dealing with all the stuff that we're dealing yeah, with, right. you know, the mental illness, the suicide rate, and all these things, we got to get rid of all this, 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 this that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So that we can't we talking about intervention, we have in these forums, but then afterward what goes on. That's because right. we hear a lot of talk. So, you right. know, and um, and and no, it's not gonna always be light for those that choose to step up to the plate. Right. Okay, but as you said, having a heart to do things, you know, mm -hmm. having that compassion for others, you know, how much do we mean to one to each other? That's right. And That's to right. what degree are we willing to help one another? Yeah. That's right. The love thing. Mm -hmm. and, 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 um, another issue that uh, a lot of our uh, younger uh, African American men are facing and, and women too uh, is bullying. Oh yes, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a contributing factor. It contributes to a lot of suicides yes. and, and also uh, suicidal thoughts. Yes, it does. Um, even on the college campus, mm -hmm. uh, it, this is going on. I had one young man, he had been bullied, he said he had been bullied every day in his like junior, senior year. Because mm -hmm. he was, he was light-skinned, mm -hmm. he was small, and they would uh, throw balls at him, throw things at him. Every day, even he was uh, bullied, beating up, stuff like that. And uh, he was like 21 when, when I, the team I was working with engaged him, and he had always had these suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then he carried that all the way from, from high school up mm -hmm. to the age of 21. And you see then, you know, and I, you know, this is going to bring into the next subject. Mm -hmm. we, um, we're talking about them as far as the suicide, but how many of them have so much of this anger and hatred built up in them that that has been an increase in our homicide rate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 because right now black men kill black men. Yes, they do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's 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 <laughs> almost like you you killing yourself because mm -hmm. you hate yourself so much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you hate everything that you represent. And I know from from my experiences in my neighborhood, a lot of the young guys that I know kind of got caught up in that murder and stuff. Mm -hmm. I kind of remember them when they were young and some of the stuff that they had to watch their moms go through. Mm -hmm. You know, they watched, they watched their father walk out on the family, they watched the older, men, the older men in the neighborhood take advantage of their mother and, and, and be predators to the young kids. Mm -hmm. And when they got old enough, mm -hmm. when they got enough strength in them, they started killing, mm -hmm. you know, because they hated everything that that represented, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. And I could see where that would make any young man mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people like, how could they be doing that to each other? But if you was in a house, a crack house, and you watched the moms get her, her food stamps that month, and the kids run around with pampers that hasn't been changed in weeks, and as soon as the food stamps come, the mother go and, and buy crack with it, that little kid becomes an animal. Mm -hmm. I mean, the little kid becomes an animal. He's walking around in his own feces. He's not eating properly. Um, he's watching his mother be a crack whore. In his mind, he, he hates everybody. He hates life. Yeah. So automatically, I start relating to it, especially when I see it on the news. I, I, and I worked a lot with one of the, one of the biggest questions was posed to me by a young guy. I was working with a juvenile um, place. He said, "Well, Mr. John, how could you talk about God when my father OD, my mother's in prison, and now my grandma got arthritis?" And he said, so don't tell me about God, because God don't like people like me. Mm -hmm. And that that troubled my spirit. Even to this day, I did not know what to say to him. Because how could I tell him, man, God loves you anyway, when he got all of these factors in his life that shows that it must not be nobody that loved him. Mm -hmm. That young man wound up shooting somebody, I think, like 17 times. Mm -hmm. Because it's almost like... you. It, it, it's like you, you watch and you say, okay, this is when we start trying to show him that people do love him. Mm -hmm. 
But all the time, the next staff member will come in and treat him like a doorman. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. He don't see you till next weekend again. Mm -hmm. And everybody treat him like a number. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, shut up, because this is how we're going to get a paycheck. You mm -hmm. just need to do what we tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Nobody, it's like we have, we have disposable people. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. It's like we have disposable people that people use as as a resource to get ahead and mm -hmm. they don't care anything about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. You know, they care about the middle class, the upper class. These people right here, we just use them as guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. This is where we put all the medication we experiment with. This is where we try all these experimental tests with. We don't care nothing about them. So what happens is that young man, he hates life. He hates everything about life. And he really hates us because we represent the people that left him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we represent the people that turned their back and didn't do anything to try to save them. So I understand a lot of people saying them young people don't have no respect for their elders. Their elders didn't do anything for them. Mm 